Welcome back to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy here with former Browns head coach Hugh Jackson. This is your first time in 31 years, not on a sideline. Do you miss it? Oh, absolutely. It's been hard. It's been yeah. different, uh, but it's been fun too. You took a lot of criticism in mm -hmm. the, the past two and a half seasons as the head coach of the Browns. A lot of criticism, a lot of blame. Mm -hmm. How do you handle all of that coming on you? Well, you, you have to have faith first and mm -hmm. belief and trust in yourself and uh, a belief system of yourself and know that you're doing it the best you can, that you're trying to create an environment for our players to be the best they can be, that you're helping run an organization that's truly trying to change a culture and get to winning. But it is tough when you're one in 31, you yeah. know, and some of the things that were said, um, some might have been correct and some probably were not correct, mm -hmm. but, but you have to deal with it and you have to move forward. It was reported that when uh, Jimmy Haslam and John Dorsey came into your office mm -hmm. to let you go, mm -hmm. you said, get the f out of my office. I sure did. Okay. Yeah, because I just didn't believe that the reasoning that was behind it, that the team had quit, I wasn't buying that. You know, and nobody's going to tell me even here today that the team quit. We played in too many overtime games. We had too many opportunities to win games early in the year. So I felt that was disrespectful coming from John Dorsey. That, y that he was insinuating basically that you couldn't get the team to keep Absol playing. Absolutely. I mean, go back and look at those first two years to get the team to keep playing and then look at this year. I thought there was improvement happening. Obviously, we had games that we could have won that we didn't win. At the end of the day, we didn't, but I sure thought we were well on our way to improving. Is there anything you would have done differently in Cleveland? I would have stayed as the offensive coordinator myself. I would have called Really? It. Absolutely. Why? Uh, the CEO game doesn't fit me. Okay. I mean, I love leading organization and men and giving direction, but I'm a play caller. You know, I'm a strategist as far as offense is concerned. I'd earned that reputation and I gave it up after those first two years. Do you regret that? Yes, no doubt. So do you want to go back to coaching in the NFL? Oh, absolutely. As an offensive coordinator? As an offensive coordinator, as a head coach. Um, I mean, I think I'm equipped and, and prepared to do those things. It's uh, a lot of times easy, it's just especially with everything you've been through, that people will focus on the negatives. Absolutely. For you, what are you most proud of in your career? <sighs> that I, I think I have a, a good reputation, mm -hmm. that I'm fair and honest and hardworking at what I do. Um, being Pro Football's Offensive uh, Coordinator of the Year in 2015 was awesome um, because that meant that I did the work. Uh, and probably the, the relationships that I have that I've made with certain individuals, one being Marvin Lewis, who's one of my best friends in the business, Mike Zimmer. I think those things are, are very special about coaching and the players that you've coached and dealt with in the National Football League. So are you still close with any of the Browns players? Yes, I am. Yeah. Uh, quite a few of them. I, I still am in contact with those guys. I want to see them do well. The Browns were supposed to be a really great team this season. Mm -hmm. They added Odell Beckham Jr., but they haven't really lived up to the preseason expectations. Do you have any idea why? Well, I mean, I don't think it's fair for me to truly uh, comment and try to say what's going on. But as an observer, I will say that it just seems like the chemistry hasn't meshed yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're working hard at it, trying to get that squared away. Obviously, they're very, very talented. But it takes more than talent to win games in the National Football League. You fought ownership to get uh, Miles Garrett over Mitch Trubisky, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. He is currently suspended indefinitely for hitting mm -hmm. Mason Rudolph with his helmet. Mm -hmm. What did you think when you saw that? I was surprised. Yeah. That's not the Miles that I know, you know, and uh, I'm sure he's very remorseful for doing that. He's such a competitive person, mm -hmm. a tremendous football player, but, but a tremendous person. So I'm surprised that it escalated to that level. Have you spoken to him? I've texted him. I have not heard back from him, but mm -hmm. I texted him because I want him to know I'm supporting him. But me knowing him, he's probably not looking at his phone very much. Really? Why? Yeah. I, I think, uh, you know, sometimes in these situations, it's no different than when I was coaching. People get your numbers and they get your DM. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you look at that phone and you think it's a positive message and it's something that's trying to tear you down. Yeah. So that, that's tough. What did you want to say to him? Just that I supported him. You know, I think he knows what he did was wrong. And, uh, but he needs to move forward from it and re rebuild his, his image, you know, and he will. I, I truly believe that he will. Another player that the Browns drafted while you were there is Baker Mayfield. Mm -hmm. How do you think he's done so far? Uh, obviously, he hasn't played as well as he's wanted to. I mean, the key to their success is him. 
um, when he plays well, they normally have a very good chance to win. I think he's starting to really hit a stride right now, um, but he's a very talented player, a very good leader. I'm surprised at the start that he had to the season, but he'll finish strong. The last time that you were on a field with him was mm -hmm. on opposing sides. Right. You know what I'm going to say. Absolutely. But he stared you down yes. after a play. I wish I could have seen that. I didn't see you it. You didn't see no, it. No, I was watching the guy run uh, the ball that he completed. Uh -huh. The guy was running down the field. And I was coaching on defense at the time. So I'm trying to make sure we get this guy tackled. I didn't see him stare me down. Do you have any idea what it was about? No. No? I still this day, I don't. You don't. Mm -hmm. How's your relationship with him? Well, I haven't spoken to him, obviously, but I think it's truly about, I think he said it, me leaving and going within the division really bothered him. Why? I don't understand that. I don't even understand that thinking, but that was his reasoning. Okay, coming up, we'll have more with Hugh Jackson. Check out our YouTube channel, Fair Game on FS1, to catch all the best highlights of our show. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.